It's nice of your old school to let us try out our science talk on some female students. Well, they're actually pretty excited. I'm their most famous alum. <laughs> if you don't count the serial killer who ate all those prostitutes. <laughs> This must feel pretty good for you, coming back to your alma mater as an astronaut. Yeah, last time I was here, I was just a scrawny little nerd. <laughs> and now you're also an astronaut. So many memories. I mean, how many times in these hallways was I tripped, punched, and spit on? <laughs> my old locker. I have a master's in engineering, and I still can't figure out how Scott Kopensky got me and my briefcase to fit in there. <laughs> hey, what? Nothing? <laughs> Smart, we don't want any problems. Okay, who's ready for some science? Me too. Okay, I am Dr. Leonard Hofstetter. I am here with my friends, Dr. Cooper and real life astronaut, Howard Wallowitz. And we are going to show you girls how cool a job in science can be. How cool, you ask? Well, how about negative 273 degrees? Because that's the temperature at which entropy reaches its minimum value. Did I just learn something new and have fun doing it? What? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so now let's bring out theoretical physicist, Dr. Sheldon Cooper. <laughs> Hello, female children. <laughs> Allow me to inspire you with a story about a great female scientist. Polish-born, French-educated, Madame Curie. Co-discoverer of radioactivity, she was a hero of science. Until her hair fell out, her vomit and stool became filled with blood, and she was poisoned to death by her own discovery. With a little hard work, I see no reason why that can't happen to any of you. <laughs> Are we done? Can we go? The thing to remember is you can go to outer space too. <laughs> I mean, look at me. I went to this very school. Those desks you're sitting in? I was once super glued to one of them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Did you go to the moon? No, but I did go to the International Space Station. Did you fly the rocket? No, but I was in the rocket. I didn't actually... So you just flew around? That's kind of like my uncle. He's a flight attendant. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm an American hero. Your uncle brings people nuts, okay? All right, all right, all right. Boy, we are learning a lot here. Uh, thank you, astronaut Howard. <clears throat> um, I am what's called an experimental physicist, which is super fun because I get to test theories and work with lasers. Yes? How did you decide to become a scientist? Oh, excellent question. Um, I suppose I've always been into science. You know, my mother and father are scientists, so I was kind of led in that direction. Eh, pushed might be a better way to describe it. <laughs> to be honest with you guys, when I was your age, I wanted to be a rap star. <laughs> like Snoop Dogg, but with a healthy respect for the police. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure you laugh. <laughs> Just like my mother did. <laughs> After I confided, I was derided and chided. My mom's and I collided. She said my dreams were misguided. <laughs> That's just a little freestyle. <laughs> I never wanted to play the cello. <laughs> How do, you, how do you meet girls playing the cello? Hey, 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 you want, want to come over to my house and listen to me play an instrument that sounds like a suicidal bumblebee? <laughs> Quick, pull the fire alarm. Let's get out of here. Uh, hello again. Um, yeah, I don't know if women in general have been actively discouraged from pursuing the sciences, but uh, it's clear you young women here today have been. 